Friends, on behalf of American Church in Berlin, welcome. My name is Denise banks Grozadik, and as curator and director of the talks, I have the honor of once again leading us through this first part of our Walk the Talk initiative for social justice. So today's talk is called, Is This Racism? Exploring Microaggressions and Other Not-So-Small Acts of Racism, or as I prefer to say, acts of aggression within the system of race. And because those systems of race are so enmeshed in the very structure and the fiber of our society, racist behavior happens often, and even more often we engage in it at a subconscious or non-intentional level. And much of what I'm gonna to share, to uh, share with you today is based on the work of Dr. Darold Wing Su, and he's an American psychologist and a professor at Columbia University. What is a microaggression? Imagine just for a moment that you are dressed up, you are going to um, a very important business dinner or some, some event and you're dressed really nicely and you walk into the room and because it's such a fantastic event, you have got your hair done up. It's big and it's beautiful. And you're talking amongst these people, business executives, and someone says, oh my gosh, I love your hair. Oh my gosh, can I touch it? That is a great example of a microaggression that happens all the time. Microaggression is a term that was coined in the 1970s by a psychiatrist, Dr. Chester Pierce. And a common definition of microaggression is that it's a comment, it's an action, it's an incident that indirectly, subtly, and or often unconsciously or unintentionally discriminates or expresses a prejudiced attitude toward a member of a marginalized group. In our case, such as a racial, racial or ethnic minority. And according to Dr. Sue, microaggressions, and this is a, a better definition I think we can work with, microaggressions are prejudices that leak out in interpersonal situations and decision points. And they are experienced as slights, as insults, as indignities, as denigrating messages. A micro-invalidation is an act of negating or ignoring the psychological thoughts, the feelings, or the experience, the, the experience reality of a black person, and again, or another, or a person of color. And an example, this might be asking someone where, from the US, where were you born? No, but where are you really? from, which conveys that that person is an American, is not really American. Have you ever been in an, an elevator and a black person walks in and somebody leaves? Like, oh, I'll wait for the next one. Microsoft, that is intended. Part of that is the conditioning that we are experiencing every day. If the only time you hear about a black uh, a black man or a black person or another person of another ethnicity or color is that they are on the news and it is a black person who committed this or allegedly or supposedly and whenever you are confronted with this, uh, this, this person, this type of person, it's always in a negative context. Even if you consciously think, I don't believe that, it works on our subconscious, which is why we have to, to be, become more aware of these things when they're happening. Uh, another example, micro insult. I don't see color. When I look at you, I don't see color. Well, geez, I'm invisible. It also, the, the message is that it implies that if I did see color, something would be wrong with you. This is why people get a little edgy when you say, I don't see color. Well, then how can you see me for the experience that, I, that for how I experience this world? Because this is part of who I am. Micro uh, invalidation. 
Racism doesn't exist anymore. I've never witnessed anybody being racist. There's no, there's no medical uh, bias. Things like that, negating other people's experience because you haven't seen it. So how do microaggressions impact people? When do they start impacting people? Pretty much from the time you are on this planet until the end of your life. <laughs> so an example, there's a little girl, fifth grade, and she's talking with her best friend, Susan. And Susan says, I'm so glad we're best friends. Susan is white, the other little girl is not. You're not like the others. That's Susan, and that is in, indeed this person's real name, is now a lawmaker in Washington, D.C. How do her views impact the world? Seventh grade, a student has written an essay, and the, the teacher says, you, the, the English teacher says, you didn't write this. This, this is college level work. You did not write this. You people can't do this. So that student has to stay after school for two and a half hours to rewrite the essay so that the teacher knows that it was done by that student. Microaggressions, microinvalidation, micro insult. Another, another time, high school student working at McDonald's and is watching children crying when they open up their Happy Meals. I didn't want this toy, I want the pretty one, not the black one. I want the pretty doll, not the black one. So we know that that kid didn't wake up thinking that. They probably have been conditioned to associate black, dark, bad, ugly, don't want it. I'm also not gonna play with you at school. A professional young woman goes into interview at a bank. And this time, this is uh, take moving, moving out of the US to, to Germany. Um, goes into interview, is called in for a second interview, a third interview. Each time in the interview, there's someone higher in the level of command in that organization. And she's thinking, geez, I don't want to own the bank. I just want to work here. And the interviewer says, <clears throat> well, um, we have a certain clientele. Uh, how do you deal with being black? True story. How do you deal with being black? The response? Pretty well, I've been black all my life. True stories, and I know that they are true because every single one of them was taken out of my life. So what, what I want to illustrate is that this is just commonplace and it's not something that happened you know, 50 years ago, we were talking about this earlier, not 100 years ago, 50 years ago. We we're talking last week, day before yesterday. What can we do about microaggressions? The first thing is what you're doing now, what we're doing now in this space, um, increasing our awareness about what, that, what microaggressions are, educating ourselves and our families on, on bias on, on what microaggressions are. Awareness is the first step. And once you become aware of that, um, reading works from, we talked about the, Dr. Daryl Wing Su and also another uh, author, which is a very simple book and it's all about race, but there's also a chapter in there about microaggressions specifically. Um, Ijeoma Alo, Alo. <laughs> and, and learning how to respond. And one of, the, one of the things that people say is, well, should, you know, what should I do if I see it? Speak up. Think about, am, am I going to be safe in this situation? And also pick your battles. We're at the end, and Tom will be meeting you all at the back so we can go out and 
continue walking our talk of loving our neighbors.